Oh, I'm so excited. I feel like that didn't really convey through my tone. I'm very excited. When I pulled up, I was like, eee! squeaking, squealing. I'm at Lowe's. Is this just how all the vlogs are gonna start now? Yeah, at Lowe's. Can't see my screen at all. It's very, very, very sunny lighting. I was just stopping in for some lawn bags, but uh, may as well have a look around, right? Got to. Lots and lots of pansies and flops. No surprise there at some evergreens. The nice old gold junipers. Why am I touching that? I'm allergic to juniper. What's wrong with me? Some gorgeous heathers. I love heathers so much. Ooh, I'm trying so hard. Exercising so much self-restraint. Don't buy anything. Do not buy anything. Oh, I am really, really feeling these coral knockout roses. They are beautiful. Hey, hi shadows. Great lighting. I would really like to try the oh so easy roses this year. These are knockouts. I used to have a huge drift in my backyard. Just a big, big big row of knockouts, the pink double knockouts, back when my yard got sun, and I loved it. They're beautiful, but uh, like I said, the sun went away as the trees grew, so I had to get rid of them. And they smell nice. Mine, I don't remember mine ever smelling nice. These white and red tree roses are really nice. Whenever I've tried the, like, combo thing, one always ends up dominating over the other in the long run, but they're pretty. They've got these big pots over here in corners. I'm not going to do this, but I'm just kind of thinking out loud here. I like the shape of these pots. With those tree roses, something like that in the middle, with something nice and airy, and then a nice trailer. Oh, that'd be so pretty. That would look really nice, but uh, I would want a bigger tree rose, and I don't think I'd want the, two the ones with the two tones on them. I'd really like to get back into roses this year, but I think I'm gonna do them in containers so I can move them around with the sun, since the yard ends up being really shady in the fall time, or like late summer. So I think containers would work well. This lighting, this is terrible lighting. All right, need to go do what I came here for and get some lawn bags. Yeah, that's what I actually came here for, this and lawn bags. Yeah, that's how the vlog was supposed to be starting. The mealybug situation's gotten pretty bad. But I got distracted by flowers and pretty things. It's a vlog, that's, that's how things go. I always have the hardest time finding these when I'm here. Because they don't really keep them with the lawn and garden stuff. Oh, look at that, they got all their Mark Wahlbergs outside already. A whole bunch of them. I mean, it's 49. They're probably moving them inside at nighttime, I would imagine. Oh, look at how cute these are. This is Pyrus japonica. The name's Little Heath. Right there, see that? Look at how adorable these are. I'm always a sucker for tiny little leaves. It really makes me want to get on and start doing some bonsai stuff. But not with these. Didn't come here to buy plants. I really, really, really want to, though. These ice blue junipers are looking pretty good. Stop it. I'm not like deathly allergic. They just make me kind of itchy. They irritate my skin. But look at how much cascade these already have going on. Forget it. I can be itchy for the vlog. Look at that. I mean, that's intense. That's a lot of cascade for a plant that size. How you doing? Looking good. Oh, these shamrock collies look really nice too. Shamrock collies are awesome because they're good all the way down to zone four. They only get about five feet tall, I believe. Let's see. Yeah, five feet tall and wide. And they look really nice in containers if you're going for something more formal and they're evergreen, though, I mean, touchy if it's really windy. But these look really excellent. And 40 bucks isn't bad for that. Okay, I'm finally home. And people have been asking for an update with the mealybug situation, so that's what I'm going to do. Sorry, I got kind of distracted at the beginning of the vlog. I wasn't even planning on vlogging while I was at Lowe's. I just went in to grab some neem oil and some lawn bags, and then it's just, there was so much pretty, so much spring stuff. I just, I had to, had to share it with y'all. I'm gonna go ahead and get some plants out of the way. This is a Manjula pothos. It came looking like this. It's the only one they had, but it's actually, it's starting to put out a bunch of new growth. I absolutely love this pothos. I feel like it's worthy of its own video, that and I have another one, so I'll probably talk about that another time. I'm gonna try and stay on subject here for those of you that just clicked on this video to see the mealybug stuff. That is, stay on topic for right now. It's a vlog, so vlog things will be happening after this. I'm gonna go ahead and drop these vandas in here. May as well give them a little bit of a soak while I'm at it. So, how did those lace wings work out? Yeah, not well. Not well at all. There's a tiny, tiny dot in there. That's a mealybug. The mealybugs are inside 
the rice holes. So, no, that's a fail. It, that can be for a lot of reasons. I'm not gonna, like, blame them. It's not their fault. Ultimately, uh, it's best to use the lace wings preventatively. It was kind of a long shot putting them in here when the infestation had already spread. So what I'm doing here is I'm going through tidying things up, and I'm gonna have to spray. Look at this. Look at how horrible this is. It got really bad. I wanted to give the soldier beetles the lace wings. I wanted to give them time to kind of do their thing, but I can't just let this keep spreading. It's going to kill the plant eventually. It's gotten that bad. Millibugs normally don't get this bad, not for me, but I can see the lighter color in the foliage of these palm fronds because the millibugs are literally just sucking all the nutrients out of those fronds, out of the leaves. So I just, I gotta, gotta get rid of them. So I'm going to use neem oil, but I have to be very careful because even though neem oil is non-toxic to most animals, it is slightly toxic to fish. So I'm gonna be very, very, very careful. And in order to control the neem oil, I'm going to use a rag. What I've decided to do here is I've sprayed the neem oil onto a rag. That way I can control where it goes. Really the neem is practically unnecessary since I'm removing them this way. I could just use a damp rag with some dish soap. I'm not gonna be able to get all of them, but I mean, even getting like 25 to 50% of them off of here would be a big improvement and really help these palms out a lot. I'm gonna keep going through and doing it like this, and it's it's probably going to take a pretty long time. If it were like 20 degrees warmer outside, that would be so nice. I could just take these out and remove them that way, blast them off with a hose and use a spray. But uh, it's not, it's too cold. You can see their outlines on these fronds up here. I mean, this is just absolutely horrible. Look at this up here terrible. Within the crowns is where I am the most concerned about them because they get down into these little nooks and crannies and they get right down into that crown and they'll choke out the emerging frond. Really don't want that to happen so I am going to spray inside the crown of every single one of these. Which really is kind of always a risky thing to do. You don't really want moisture down there but luckily the neem oil is also a natural fungicide so I'm thinking it'll be okay. Okay it's been about I don't know, three minutes, and it is literally raining mealybugs on me. I am covered in them. You see that one moving around on my arm? They're on my shirt and shaking them off. Like, this is, this is, this is disgusting. In fact, I've decided that this is just, it's not practical. There's too many of them. I did a good job. I got a lot of them off, but there are still, there's a lot in here in some of the nooks and crannies I can't get to. That's the problem with mealybugs. So they're really good at hiding in all the different crevices. That's why I was trying to make sure to spray the neem into like these sections in here and in the crowns, but this is impractical. I think next week it's supposed to be in the 60s, which is still too cold to be moving these guys outside, but um, that's what I'm gonna have to do. I'm gonna have to take them out. I'm just gonna have to blast these guys off of them. I don't see another way about it. I'm gonna keep on using the neem. I'll do this for a few minutes a day just so that it's not like overwhelming. I can't go through and remove these all in one day. I'll lose my mind. That's just, it's too much. But I also need to like go take my clothes off and shower and be very careful about how I do it. I might like, I think I might actually have to take my clothes off right here because I'm covered in mealybugs and I don't want to spread it throughout the rest of the grow area. So far I've been lucky. They've been sticking to the Eureka palms and to my bird of paradise, which I'm not worried about the bird of paradise. It's back there in the corner. It'll be okay. It's really easy to wipe them off of that one. So when I see them on there, I just wipe them off. But so far, they've been staying over here. It's, uh, I just, yeah, not gonna work. I gotta figure something else out. So that was disgusting. The option of taking these guys outside and blasting them off, I think is what I'm probably going to do, but there are some other things I can try. My issue with taking them outside is one, I have to remove all of this plastic. I'm in my garage right now and I use plastic to help hold in the heat and the humidity so I don't have to heat as large of an area. So not only do I have to remove the plastic, but it's gonna be kind of stressful to the palms to move them out. I have to bend them at an extreme angle to get them through the garage door. And they're kind of delicate right now because they've had all the sap sucked right out of them. But I think that might be the best option. That or I can just take them over like to the corner, open the garage door and lay them down on their side. I can flush everything out and into the driveway and get it out. As far as natural things are concerned, I can try ladybugs or the mealybug destroyers, but there's a couple problems with those. One of those problems is that the mealybug destroyers, those crypts, they're very expensive. It's like... 80 or 90 bucks for a hundred of them. I, I can find some on Amazon where there's, I think, 25 of them for it'd be $43 after shipping. 
There's too many mealy bugs in here. They're not going to be able to handle that. And then there's also the regular ladybugs. They do eat mealy bugs, but ladybugs really don't like to be confined into a space. So once I get them in, I can order 10,000 of them, dump them in here. They'll hang out for a while, but they're going to disperse and they're just going to try and find their way out. That's what ladybugs do. I also don't want to end up ordering in ladybugs and putting them on here and then having it not work, waiting a couple more weeks and having the infestation just grow worse and then having to use a chemical that could also kill the ladybugs. That's what happened with the lace wings. I, I think the majority of the lace wings did not hatch, didn't pupate. So that was part of the problem and I was just too late getting them out. That's another thing. If you don't know if you're new here, I can't use chemicals in here. There's this fish pond in here, so no chemicals. Even using the neem oil was kind of risky. I do have carbon in the filter, which helps remove that, but it's still, it's not a risk I'm willing to take. There's also, there's some sturgeon in here. They are extremely, extremely sensitive to chemicals. So I, it's just, I can't do it. Outdoors, however, that's a different story. What I'm thinking I might end up doing is going ahead, laying these on their side, washing as much of those off as I can, spraying them down with neem, a heavy, heavy soak letting that sit for a while, rinsing them again, repeating that probably two or three times. It's gonna be kind of brutal, but I think it's the best way to go. The reason I need to rinse the neem off, I've already rinsed it after this application that I just did. The reason I have to rinse that neem off is because I can't risk the fronds up here getting wet and having that run off down into the water. That would be bad for the fish. So it has to get rinsed off. Uh, there's dish soap, diluted dish soap that works, but again, can't have that in the water with the fish. I use peppermint oil for a lot of things, which is great, but again, can't have that in the water with the fish. So the issue that's happening here is that even the all natural alternatives to chemicals don't really work in here. Not in this enclosed space. What is ultimately going to happen, what I'm going to be doing for sure, is that when it is warm enough to move these out full time for the summer, I'm going to unpot them. I'm getting all the soil out of their roots. I'm sterilizing everything, the pots, their roots, all of the foliage, and I'm just going to treat these like crazy with a systemic which I'm always apprehensive to do because systemics, like they leach out. There's the one I want to use is a neonicotinoid. It's, I think it's called imiclapidorid. Imiclapidor, I can't pronounce it, but it's going to be typed out here on the screen. It's effective with mealybugs, but it can last in soil for three to four years. That's not likely to be the case with potting soil. It'll flush out, but that still runs off into the environment. It's not super harmful to mammals and people, but it can be. And like even a little bit harmful, I don't really want to do that. It's also really not great for the pollinators and those things as well. So ideally I would use a systemic in here. That's actually the reason I have, there's like a piece of plastic over here. See that piece of plastic? That's because I did try a systemic. I've tried two systemics actually this year and I had to put up a little shield so that when I watered the systemic, that systemic in the soil wouldn't splatter back in. So I guess I could go ahead and give that a try as well. Maybe that's what I'll do. I'll try laying these on their side, blasting as many of the bugs off as possible using neem oil, and then applying that systemic and just keeping my fingers crossed that this problem stays somewhat minimalized until I can actually get these outside, unpop them, and really just go ham on these mealybugs. Okay, that's enough with the mealybugs. It's time to move on with life. I hate them and I just, I'll, I'll keep working on it. But now what I wanted to do in my previous video, yesterday's video, the fern video on the lemon button fern, I tossed together a little terrarium just kind of using like leftover scraps that I had from making this terrarium over here. Came out a little bit bare because I ran out of stone. I did end up running to Target and getting some more, but I think I decided I'd rather kind of fill the spare space up with clippings and do some propagation in there. So that's why I have this pothos sitting right in front of me. So I'm gonna go in and take a few snippets out of this guy, probably just like three to five of them. I'm dropping them into water because I want them to be fully hydrated for this. Say I'm avoiding taking cuttings off of the tip of the growth. So like I don't want to take a cutting from here. So I want it to keep growing outward since it is already kind of compact as it is. There we go, got a whole bunch of cuttings in here. These are mostly from the Manjula. I also took a few from my Java Blue, which is a different type of pothos. It's not the Epipreneum Arium, so uh, I don't know how well it will propagate. I'm not using a rooting hormone. I probably should be, 
but uh, I, I just I don't have any. And Pothos generally don't need it because they propagate so easily, but I don't know. I'm gonna find out. The pieces with the longer stems, I'm gonna go ahead and stand up near the glass so that I can kind of see them root out around like the clear have this clear part here. I think that'll look really cool. With the rest of these, I'm actually just gonna kind of stick them down like this and let them sort of drape over that gravel. Just kind of poke in a little bit of that stem into that soil. There we go. I tried to kind of cluster the clippings together so it looked a little bit more like there were actual plants in here and not just leaves scattered all over the place. I know it doesn't exactly look pretty, but it's functional. And that's kind of what I was going for here. I have these pothos cuttings up here against the glass. So like I said, I'll be able to kind of watch them, see them root out. That'll be neat. I tucked the Java Blues in little clusters of three. Like I said, I didn't want it to look just like random leaves scattered about. Even though like this doesn't look super pretty. I think it's just gonna be kind of cool. I wanna see how well they propagate. The pothos, well, the Epipernium arium pothos, those generally propagate very, very easily. I have noticed my marble queen who is hiding, I think. You can kind of see her dancing around over there. She's breaking through some of the orchids. That one does not propagate for me as easily as just like the regular art, just the regular golden pothos. I'm wondering if that's going to be the same thing with the Manjula. Also, I have no idea if I'm pronouncing that route. It's M-A-N-J-U-L-A. -A. I don't know. Like I said, with the Java Blue, this Epipreneum, I think it's Panata, Panatatata. I don't know how to type it out here. I can't remember its common name. It's a whole different type of pothos, so it may not propagate well at all. And I didn't use rooting hormone. Like I said, pothos, generally, as long as they're in something that's nice and moist, they'll normally get going on their own without much trouble. That's why I didn't really bother with any rooting hormone. Some of the leaves I picked out had some bad spots on them, so I was like, get that really, to me, I should have used only leaves that had brown spots on them and cleaned the plant up, made it look a lot nicer. But uh, I didn't think it would look as pretty in here, so I didn't do that. So that's that. I'm gonna sit back, wait a few weeks, and see what happens. This terrarium is doing wonderfully. It's been a few days, and there are all kinds of new fronds unfurling in there. The moss is sending up all kinds of growth. Looks like there's some grass in there, but this is a loose soil, so once it gets a little bit bigger, I'll go ahead and pluck it out. I added some pillow moss. I don't normally have very good luck with pillow moss. We just like, we don't get along. I don't know what the deal is. And this is, it's sold as a live moss, even though it's dry. So the story behind it is that you're supposed to hydrate it and it'll green up for you and it'll release spores and start growing again. What I think is going to happen with this pillow moss, I think it's going to be green because I rehydrated it and then it's going to turn brown and die and nothing else is going to happen. But hey, I mean, figured may as well try it. I took the cork off the top. that It was staying humid in there a little bit too long, like around, I would say 11 o'clock this morning it was still, uh, there was still condensation on the side. So I went and took that off to let a little bit more water out, but otherwise it's been doing very, very, very well. What's going on down there, pumpkin? Checking things out? Yeah. The refrigerator repair man just left and they said the problem is that it was leaking coolant. And then it also has a leak from a water line that runs into it. So I need to change out that. I'm not going to join camera because I don't even know what I'm doing. It's, I'm, I'm going to try and figure it out. I feel like that'll be kind of boring and probably very time consuming. So I'm going to get on that in a little bit. What an abrupt transition from me putting pothos cuttings in a bowl. I accidentally watered Mark Wahlberg with like scorching hot water. I didn't mean to. There wasn't any hot water because like they had just showered and everything. And I just didn't think about it. I tend to let the water run through my ferns for a pretty long time when I water them. And it just, it, the hot water kicked back in. So poor Mark. Poor Marky Mark. Seems okay though. I just pulled this guy out and there's no water on the floor. So I don't happen to the leak. Must have been the way the hose was angled. I'm still gonna change it out, but it's not like a dire emergency. That's kind of a relief. Hey Cosmo. How you doing bud? You pretty bird. Started moving some plants outside. Here's the contents of the refrigerator. These are my... Oh my gosh, the security thing scared the crap out of me. Anyways, these are my mule palms. They are doing wonderful. They have a little bit of browning, some dried up fronds from the winter time, but really not bad at all. As these guys, the mule palms, these are a cross between a butia capitata and then a queen palm. They're very, very resilient palm trees. In the winter time, I move them in here into the garage. 
And um, this is the I'm pulling the plastic down because it's it's a whole long story. I have to get it back up there. But basically, I keep the mule palms on the outside of the plastic. All the tropicals, the moisture loving, heat loving plants are on the inside of there. See the alakash is rubbing up against the plastic there. And that's because they really, they don't need the heat and the humidity. I probably water these, I don't know, maybe once a month when they're in here. They're not getting a ton of light, temperatures are cooler. They just kind of chill. If I had more room back there in my bubble, then I would put them in there because then they would just keep on growing, which would be fantastic. No barking. You know who I am. Don't bark at me. So having a little bit of loss on the end of the fronds isn't a big deal at all. Just come through and trim it off. Actually, I need to get in here. I don't think these clippers, oh, they are, they'll do it. Kind of, not quite, almost. I need to try and get these cut, get the boots cut closer to the trunk. I don't like when they stick out really far like this. Come on, there we go. Well, almost. It looks a lot nicer to have those cut down lower, but to preserve my pruners, for now, I'm just gonna take off the stuff that I actually have to. These are not my favorite clippers ever. But they work. That looks better. I don't know if you can tell a difference, but I can. I think they look much better. I'm going to repot these this year. I'm pretty excited to do that. They've been, like you can tell, it's they're overdue for a repotting. And they're palms, so they like to be somewhat root bound. This is a bit extreme. They really, last year, they just exploded in growth. And you can see down here, over here, these are the old sweet potato vines. And they're, they're still, like this whole layer up here is all roots. I'm going to have to chisel all that out. I'm not going to do that now. I don't think it's warm enough. And I'm keeping an eye on them because I don't like to move my palm trees when they're dehydrated, which they are, because I just told you I've only been watering about once a month in the grow space in here. If you move them when they're dehydrated, it's really easy to damage the heart. Heart being the center of the palm, it's all the way in there, and it's where the new fronds, the spears emerge from. It's really easy to damage that if these are dehydrated. So I just, I didn't want to move them far until I hydrate them a little bit. So I'm going to try and go ahead and give these guys a really heavy watering today. And then eh, probably tomorrow morning, I'm going to move them where they're going to get more shade. And that's because the foliage will burn. It'll bleach out. I have to be careful with them because they haven't been getting a ton of light back here. I think they're going to be okay though. Like I said, these are pretty tough. I've never really had any issues with bleaching. Sometimes there can be a little bit of it bleaching photooxidation that happens on the ends of the newer foliage. Otherwise, not a problem. Also... No mealybugs on these guys. And that's partially, I think, because I kept them heavily dusted with DE powder and they were on the outside of the bubble. This being the bubble. They're on the outside of that. And like I said before, the mealybugs have been pretty much sticking to the Eureka palms, which is really nice. And then I also moved out the windmill palms. Not much to say with them. They're pretty simple. I move them inside when temperatures start to drop into the teens, lower teens, and that's pretty much it. I don't really do much with them. And then these windmill palms, as well as the mule palms I bring back out once it looks like the lows are going going to probably not be dropping below 20 anymore. Should be staying above 20 for a while. Like we might have another dip into the upper teens, but that's not gonna hurt these guys. Or the mule palms, they're very hardy also. As long as there's not like an ice storm or something, that's a different story. Precipitation changes everything. As long as it's cold and dry, not a big deal. At least not just for a couple of days. I've noticed this Nepenthes over here, this one right here, really just taking off, doing great. And so is this one. It's harder to see the pictures because they're kind of tucked away in there. I did that on purpose though, because the Nepenthes, these pitcher plants, they like a lot of humidity. So I figured having them kind of clustered together in here, that that's going to work out better for them. The humidity and moisture from the surrounding plants kind of help keep the air a little bit more wet around them. Also, look at the bird of paradise. Look at that, huge leaf coming up. Oh wait, another leaf, and then it's hard to see, but look, there's another one. Another one. I brought this in here, what, uh, maybe two and a half, three weeks ago, and it was just barely starting to open up this larger leaf right here, and now it's got one, two, three. That's fantastic. In a couple weeks, heat and humidity goes a long way. I guess that's kind of a duh thing to say with tropicals, isn't it? Okay, I have a refrigerator to work on, a water line. I was gonna say refrigerator to repair, but that's really, that's not an accurate description. I'm gonna cut a tube and put a new tube in its place. I hope everybody's doing well. I'm pretty excited for next week. Like late next week, temperatures are supposed to really pick up here. Not like hot, but it's gonna be more like spring. It's still been a little bit chilly and crispy the last few days. There's a lot of echo when I talk close to this bolt. Y'all hear that? 
Can you, you hear the echo? The audio's been junky anyways. I'm still learning how to work with the audio on the new editing software. So thank you everybody for your patience when volume's like blah, blah, blah over the place. And hey, comment down below. You guys been doing anything with the terrariums? What do you know about the Manjula and that Java Blue Pothos? And of course, feel free to let me know if I'm pronouncing it wrong. That's never, nobody ever hesitates with that one. Which I appreciate. It's always good to keep learning. I have all my social media linked down below, down in the description. I'm on Instagram far more than anything else. Follow me and I'll follow you back. Hey, and if you like the video give it a thumbs up i always appreciate it. it makes a big difference for the videos and for the channel and don't forget to subscribe upload a few times a week then hit that notification bell that way you know when the new videos come out so this does have condensation in it but it's also like it's only about 11 o'clock in the morning i am still like i'm very weary about it i feel like the condensation should be gone by like 8 30 to 9 so i've still been kind of popping it open to let some of that out of there just because the initial planting with this things are really saturated oh, i forgot i was saying bye-bye that's right i have a refrigerator to fix that's not that's not what's happening i'm not fixing the refrigerator but what's more exciting time to get going with some planters hope everybody's doing well everything's going great for you and life's just fantastic as always and most importantly everybody keep on growing bye bye